Creating content is such hard work. The art of just being able to express something people can relate to in a memorable and impacting manner, it's truly a gift. And it's only right that you get paid for it. And one of the ways that content creators actually get paid for this is when they get to collaborate with a brand or a business. So it's not every time that you actually get a brand or a business approach you to actually do influencer work. There are times when you're going to need to approach it. So what we're going to talk about in this video is how you can be able to go and pitch yourself to a brand. What I'm going to talk about is all based on experiences that I've been through when I was working in, in the advertising industry. Each time that I got to work with an influencer and another brand, the things that we did well, the errors that we made, and some of the things that I noticed that got to help some influencers. And at the end of this, I've got a special feature from Mutsamwale. She's actually going to give us a couple of tips of how she's actually been doing this whole influencer thing on her end. So let's get into it. Right. Let's talk about preparing yourself. Influencers are all about numbers. They have the numbers and they have real numbers. When I mean real numbers, I mean their following is authentic, it's genuine, it engages with them. So if you're going to want to work with brands and businesses in the future, don't buy followers and don't do follow trains, don't do follow backs. The reason why I'm saying this is because it messes with your engagement rate. You're going to have a ballooned number of people who follow you, but a very small engagement rate because people that you've gotten aren't actually the kind of people that relate to your niche or that relates to your content. You just went and bought them and they're, they're on your account, just sitting there. They're really going to mess up with your engagement rate. Grow organically, even if it's going to take time, figure out your niche, stick to it, grow organically with people who are going to engage with your content because when you ask them to do something, they will listen. If you want to figure out how to grow organically on some of your pages and some of your accounts, I made several videos about this for Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. You can take a look at them on my channel. Whilst you're at it, please subscribe. It will be really appreciated. Next, when you figured out your influence, you now want to experiment with your influence and see what works and what doesn't. So you want to be the plug to your following. Refer them to a lot of products and services that work for them. And when you do that, be able to figure out how they're interacting with it and how they're getting to work well with it. Is it working? Is it not? For example, if you're a fashion influencer, if you're a fashion blogger, if you create fashion content on any of your social media pages, you're now for free at the moment, referring people to some of these pages, some of these accounts where they can get to find some of the clothes that you're showcasing and get to now follow the numbers and the link clicks and actually see if people are actually getting to do the things that you're asking them to do. If you are a blogger, build a mailing list because this is something else that you get to use to actually see if you can influence people to get to do something. When you have a mailing list, use it sparsely but engagingly. So make sure that everything that you're sending out in that mailing list has value to people. So Test out value. Get to find what people like, what they enjoy. By the time you get to figuring out what, you, what it is or which brands that you want to go and engage with, you've already figured out what works, what doesn't for your people. Secondly, track everything. When I mean everything, have all the data to your accounts. You want to know everything that your followers do. You want to track how they engage on your account. You want to see how they engage with your content. You want to see... When, they, when you ask them to do a certain action, do they do it? How long it takes them? How many people actually get to do it? One thing that actually helps for you to figure out what you're into and to track a fair amount of your analytics, either have a social listening tool that you, that you get to invest in or use Social Blue Book or Webfluential. These two will help you to connect all of your accounts and all of the platforms that you're on and get to evaluate what it is that you do where your influence is and what your value currently is. Also, some businesses actually get to find you through these profiles. Agencies as well, they get to use these profiles to actually get to see what you're about. It's an easy way to do it. And numbers, numbers don't lie. Influence is undeniable in numbers. And agencies can see that. If you need a benchmark, if you're not using these and you just need a simple benchmark to see if what you're doing is working, then work with this. Try to see if... 
of your following actually get to do what you've asked them to do. Then you know you've got some sort of influence going on. So remember, try to work with the 5% rule. Making a hit list. So we want to figure out which brands and businesses you want to go for. So you want to figure out your niche. Find your niche and now you want to find the businesses and the brands that are in that niche. What you want to do is start from the smallest business, smallest brand, all the way to the largest. And you want to have them all stacked up. Make that list one by one and actually get to figure out these brands. Next thing that you want to do is that you want to follow these brands and try to find their brand managers. So try to figure out what these brands are currently doing, how long they've been doing it, if they have any pain points that they're facing, and if their products and services resonate with your following. And if they don't, then scratch them off because you're going to have a tough time trying to sell anything to them. Also, it helps if you actually enjoy or actually also resonate to the brands. If you do, great. Take them on and leave them there. But have a hit list. So start with the small ones and work your way up because this allows you to actually get to figure out what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what your people like, what they don't like, what they resonate with and what they don't without you particularly harming your brand all too much. Because the moment you shoot right from the top, if you get it right, great. But if you get it wrong, it's just going to mess up with you really bad. The content that you then get to create, you actually get to realize whilst keeping to that 5% rule, get to see if you give your people a call to action, will they do it, will they not, which content works, which content does it, and move bit by bit up the ranks as you're going. Basing on your past experience and your statistics, now you need to figure out the ideas that are working based on that information. That's what you want to then go and present to them. Before you actually go and present it, you might want to find a way to protect your idea. It's important for you to do this because some brands, they're notorious for then going on to execute your idea without you. So what you want to do is that after you've finished your idea, you've made it into your PDF, you've made it into a PowerPoint, whatever, print it out, put it into an envelope and mail it to yourself. Once you receive it, don't open it, keep it closed, then you can go and present. Because what you now have is proof of a date and a concept that this idea is yours. Now, not all of your ideas might be taken. Whenever you present and it's turned down, try to ask for feedback. Get feedback as to why they think it might not work, then go back and evolve and tune it. And sometimes people just don't get what you want to do. And that's okay too. Some will understand now, some will understand later, some might never get to understand. And that's just how life is. Lastly, structuring the pitch. When you're structuring your pitch, you want to introduce yourself. Tell people who you are, where your influence is, where your niche is, what your stats are in full, and what your past successes are. So some of the brands that you've worked with and some of the successes you've had with those brands. Then you can present your idea based on the stats and success that you've had before, because this gets to help. A lot of brand managers, they pay attention a lot to numbers. If they've never interacted with you, this is the only thing that they, they can actually get to sit down with and make a proper decision. Also, it helps them as well when they have to take your idea up to their superiors and actually get to defend it. Give them clear-cut undeniable figures to work with. Then lastly, you can give them what your idea is worth. So if you have gotten a rate probably from Webfluential Social Blue Book, or you now have a certain business model that you think is going to work, one that's common that people use is that if you can actually get to give them a certain amount of traffic, then they give you a certain amount of money. Or for each product that you get to sell for them through your people, you get a percentage cut or through just a flat fee for being able to execute the idea and give them the reach and engagement that they need. And if you don't know how to make a presentation deck at all at all, you don't know how to make a keynote, you don't know how to make a PowerPoint, that's fine. Go on Canva. Canva has a lot of presentation options that you can work with. It'll help you out a ton to be able to figure out these things and to structure it properly. It'll help you also a lot if you can actually get to make examples of the execution that you want to do. So try to figure that out and see if it works. If it's a photo shoot that you want to do with the product, try to experiment with it. If it's a video that you want to make, try to make the video and see if it doesn't work out. Try to make the content for the pitch, 
so that it can be seen that you're serious and you can also see how easy or difficult it is to execute this. It'll also help you out with the costing. With that said, let's actually get to listen to Muta. Muta is going to help us out with some of the tips that she's been working on to get to figure out how you can work out with these things. Muta? Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Muta Ngale and I'm a fashion influencer, content creator, YouTuber, Instagrammer. So yeah. All right. So today I'm going to tell you guys about being more professional as a content creator. So this is a fairly new, new marketing strategy in Zimbabwe and Maybe some people might not understand it yet, and if you're here, you'll probably understand it. So let's talk about it. How to be more professional. First things first is, do you have a rate card? Do you have a rate card? Like, do you have a rate card? Okay, what's a rate card if you don't have? A rate card is the card that has your, it's like a resume for a content creator, and it also has your, your packages that you offer, the services that you offer, and it also has the kind of numbers that you, your social platforms have. Okay, so that is a rate card. And so most companies that would want to work with you would definitely ask for a rate card. And if not, they'll probably ask, how much do you charge? Some clients, I know sometimes they don't ask, don't ask about your rate card, but you should be the one that says, oh, yeah, let me send you my rate card so that you know how much I price and how much I'm worth. And basically my resume, the kind of companies that you've worked with, right? So yeah, that's the first thing that you need to have as a content creator. Okay, so from the rate card, now you want to create the content. So this is a very important thing of linking what your client wants and what you're going to offer your followers, what your followers are following you for. So that link is you, right? So you should be able to create things that resonate with who you are. That way you will not have a problem with taking what your client wants and giving out to your followers and giving them exactly what you want. So. If you want to retain your followers, what do you do? You give them exactly what they're here for, right? So now you can create all the content that you want. So how do you create content that's more professional and more linked to what your client wants and what, you, what, what your followers want? This is how you do. Professional photography. Let me say semi-professional or professional, whichever way that you want to do. I basically use my own equipment. Why? It's cheaper right I've, I've got my camera right in front of me my light somewhere here and now i can create content without having to call up some photographer or call up someone as a content creator you need to invest in your business and this is how you invest in your business you need to start with the camera you need to start with the lights you need to if you are, want to do background you need to do background this background is kind of like my investment as well because it makes more sense if I'm right in front of you with a nice background and you can clearly see me, like literally see me, right? This is what you're here for. This is what your followers are here for, actually seeing you, right? So it makes more sense if you invest in your own equipment. You might not be an expert. This is why I say semi-pro. But you eventually you'll become a pro at being able to take images that are professional enough for your Instagram and being able to take videos that are professional enough for your clients. So from equipment, we need to talk about apps. What kind of apps that you can use? Like I said, Canva, Lightroom, Photoshop, right? You need support from apps so that you can be able to make content and be able to make images that are professional and that look clear and that are nice because it's not only enough that you have to take a picture from your camera you have to edit it in a way that it's clear and the pictures are popping out as they are meant to be because the camera is a dead eye so you need to bring it back to like normal two eyes of a person so yeah that's much about it this that's exactly how i create my content and make sure that my followers keep coming back to me to get the same quality pictures that i produce and also my clients keep coming to me so a bit of pieces of other things that you can do to be more professional is make use of your emails emails are very important because most companies they use email communication and not whatsapp yes you can have whatsapp because this is the modern age of technology but have your email so that you have everything in one area okay so to recap 
you need a rate card, you need camera equipment. Even if you don't have camera equipment and you have a photographer that you work with, make sure that your photographer knows exactly what you're asking for so that every other post that you have comes out the same quality if you can afford it. But let me just say, as a content creator in Zimbabwe, get yourself your own equipment so that you can be able to whip up all this content that you wanted to create on a whip, right? Okay, the other thing is have an email address. The other thing is have apps that can support your business. Thank you guys so much for listening to my little talk through and back to you. And with that, I want you to take this experiment, go out there, go do it.